guys, Bethany here at Watch and Pray Always YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if you have been here before, thank you for coming back. If you've never watched one of our videos here, thank you for stopping by. We welcome you and we hope that you will stay uh, for the full length of the video. Um, so today I wanted to do a few things and I just pray that the Lord will give me the strength to do it because since yesterday I have not been feeling well. Um, so if I seem a little bit low energy, it's because I am. <laughs> I don't really feel good today. Um, but this is also on my heart, so I would like to uh, do this for you guys. I want to do this for you guys um, as unto the Lord. I pray that everyone who's here today will be encouraged, edified, um, inspired, exhorted, and uh, any other thing that the Lord wants to do through this humble little YouTube video and this humble little YouTube channel, um, I pray that it would be done all for His uh, glory and according to His will and His perfect timing. So if you are here today, it is not a mistake, it is not a coincidence. I believe that you're here for a reason and so I pray that you will stick around, whoever you are, I pray that you'll stick around and listen to the whole entire video. All right, please don't click off. Um, no, the videos that I make are not especially high tech, especially, um, you know, edited and, and, and whatever. This is not primarily for entertainment. This channel is primarily for the edification of the saints and also to further the message of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, um, please stay. You are welcome. I'm happy you're here. And so I just wanted to start out by sharing something that I said. I had mentioned actually in a previous video that I was going to be talking about. And basically what that is, is a Facebook post that I, that I uh, posted a couple of years ago. It was back in 2020 when, um, I felt prompted to make this um, this post and it's interesting because even back then I was like this is eventually gonna be in a YouTube video I just didn't know when and I didn't know how I was gonna do it so I guess today is the day um, so let me just find that for you guys how are you doing how's everyone doing I hope you're doing well if you need prayer, please let us know in the comments. You can leave an unspoken prayer request or however freely you feel led to, to share in the comments. Please also, um, guys, if you are prayer warriors, I would appreciate if you would read through the comments and, and, um, and help pray for some people too. If people start feeling led to share prayer requests um, in the comments. So gonna find it I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna read it stick with me please don't leave please stay all right so first I want to kind of paint a little picture um, when I was writing this post I was thinking about preps I was thinking about preparedness I was thinking about survival um, and so you'll notice and recognize the theme um, where I'm actually sharing about different aspects of spiritual preparedness through that sort of themed lens of you know physical survival and material preparedness and stuff so I hope that you will enjoy this I hope that this will encourage and inspire you and first and foremost I hope that it will um, remind you to look to Jesus. Look to him. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how crazy it gets out there, I want to encourage all of you, fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. When the world is, you know, in terror and they don't know what to do, those of us who are believers who are alive in the earth at that time, we need to shine very bright. The darker it gets, the, sh the, the brighter we need to shine. And we will be able to do this, I believe, through the grace, which is the power of God in us. 
So he will empower us and he will provide for us or else he will give us the grace to endure persecution, tribulation in a way that would be pleasing to God, that would be a powerful and beautiful testimony of true living faith. So I want to encourage you guys, no matter what you see going on in the news, no matter what you hear, read about, watch on YouTube, keep your eyes on the prize. That is Jesus Christ. And so let me share this with you. I said, uh, spiritual preps. What on earth is going on, everyone? In light of all the news circulating about Poop It's the Fan level events of biblical proportion, I felt led to put together a go-to list of spiritual preparedness scriptures. May it edify you all in Jesus' mighty name. Looking for long-term food, I'm sorry, looking for long-term water and food storage solutions? Jesus' offer of living water. John 4, 10 through 14. I'm going to read this to you. It is in the King James Version. That is the version that I love the most. Okay, so Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Moving on to the next section. The bread of life or heavenly manna. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Again, we're talking in terms of the spirit. We're not talking in terms of human suffering and the experiences that we will go through. Trials and tribulations that we're promised to go through in this life. This has to do with spiritual existence in Christ. This has to do with spiritual not hungering anymore because we've been given the bread of life, not thirsting anymore because we've been given that living water. Does that make sense so far, you guys? Are you still with me? Okay. John six forty eight through 50. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So again, we're talking about spiritual death. So we can all uh, more, more than likely look forward to dying. Our physical body will die. But when we believe on Christ, we won't suffer what's called the second death. We won't be sent to punishment and eternal torment in hell. We have heaven to look forward to. We have everlasting life and that is a gift. Okay. All right. Moving on. If slash when the grid goes down and all the lights go out, cling to the light of the world. John eight twelve. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. See also Matthew 25 to glean more tips from the parable of the ten virgins. So if you're not familiar with that parable, um, there are ten virgins. They all have lamps. Only five purchase oil for their lamps. Only five are found ready and faithful upon the, the uh, appearance of the bridegroom. So that's important for us. Again, we're talking spiritual oil for spiritual lamps, and we're talking about spiritual light. So the true light of the world who lives in 
each one of us who repent and believe his gospel and receive his gift of salvation. Amen. All right. So moving on to the topic of emergency shelter. Psalm 32, 7 through 9. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto me. And then Psalm 119, 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Proverbs 18, 10 through 11. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. I'm sorry, it says the righteous runneth into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as an high wall in his own conceit. So there's that little compare and contrast. You know, who are we going to trust in? Are we going to trust in the Lord? Who is our strong tower? Or are we going to trust in our carnal ability to accumulate um, wealth and build a, 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 a you know a, a, a wall like picture the Tower of Babel you know that is the epitome of being conceited in one's carnal ability to build and attain to certain things right so we do want to prepare physically we do want to prepare materially but we never want it to be about look at how amazing I am. We always want to point back to Christ and we want to walk according to faith. Walk by faith and not by sight in everything that we do, right? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these things will be added unto us. But we, we've got to walk by faith and take action by faith. The, the, the rich man's wealth, that is his God. Like he is in this, in this scripture, it's talking about somebody who, who worships and trusts in their own wealth rather than worshiping and trusting in God. So I hope you guys understand the, um, the concept there. Um, and then here, Colossians 3, 3, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. So basically, I mean, even now I am dead to the old me and I'm alive in Christ, right? So you can't be much more hid than someone who is dead and buried. <laughs> so the new me is alive and well in Christ Jesus, but I am the old me, my old way is dead in Christ. I'm dead, buried, in, um, and actually resurrected with Christ as well through um, his death, burial, and resurrection, through his precious shed blood, and through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit. So I am in Christ and he is in me. Um, it is a beautiful, amazing mystery, and I love it, and I love him every single day of my life. Who's with me on that? Who's with me? All right, moving on. Need armor and weapons? See your full armor at Ephesians 6. Now, I did not um, include Ephesians 6 because it's really long, but let me just give you the rundown. Um, basically, in Ephesians 6, it, it gives us head-to-toe description of our spiritual armor. So our helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our belt of truth, our shoes of the gospel of peace, taking up our shield of faith and our sword of the spirit. Um, we are fully armed. We are fully uh, protected through putting on the righteousness of Christ. Every single piece of our armor, it speaks to Christ. It points back to Christ. We wouldn't have a helmet of salvation without Christ. We wouldn't have a breastplate of righteousness without Christ's imputed righteousness. We wouldn't have a belt of truth without Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. We wouldn't have shoes of the gospel of peace or the preparation of the gospel of peace um, to shod our feet with if it weren't for the good news of the gospel, right? Um, we wouldn't have the sword of the spirit if it weren't for the word made flesh. The sword of the spirit is the written word, the canon of scripture. But Jesus Christ is the word made flesh. How many know Jesus is God in the flesh? Amen. So, um, and our shield of faith uh, with which we are able to quench those fiery darts of the enemy that are coming at us all the time. So, our spiritual armor, it's there in Ephesians 6. I highly encourage you to go to it and meditate on it and memorize it. Um, there are other 
uh, scriptures as well that have to do with armor, that have to do with um, uh, armor and battle. And so one of the next passages that I love is uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is half the battle. Maybe this is more than half the battle. So again, we're reading the headlines. We're seeing things all over social media. We're seeing things on TV and, and we're, we're hearing from our neighbors. And it's very easy to get caught up in this whirlwind of fear but we don't have to. We are to walk by faith and not by sight. Um, in, is it 2 Timothy 1, 7 or 1 Timothy 2, 7? I think it's the other way around. Anyway, um, maybe I'll uh, comment this scripture below because I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering. But it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And you better believe that you need that. That is one of your, your, your weapons right there, right? So fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, reverential fear, holy fear, fear of man, fear of failure, fear of loss, fear of death, all of that. The, the fear of the Lord can swallow that up. No big deal. So we don't want to be ruled by a spirit of fear, right? Amen. And then I also linked, um, in this post, I linked some scriptures on um, spiritual warfare, other ones that I didn't read off. Um, I can actually include this in the comments if you guys would like. Let me know in the comments below if you would like me to just copy and paste this whole document and then you can um, go to the different links and everything. Um, if that would be helpful to you, if you're interested in sharing it, um, I don't I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I You have permission to share. Um, anything that I share with you, freely I've been given, freely I give, right? It's not even mine. It's it's just the Lord. It's just his word, which we are so, so blessed to have such, so much access to it. And I think we take advantage, or I think we take it for granted and that we ought not to take it for granted. All right, moving on to emergency medical supplies. So I have uh, several different um, scriptures here from different books of the Bible. The first one is Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Again, this is spiritual. But I also uh, believe that he's still in the business of healing people's physical bodies. It is according to his will. He is not a genie in a bottle. But we are to pray prayers, prayers of faith. And I have prayed prayers of faith. And I've seen people healed all around me. I've seen neighbors healed, children healed, parents healed. So... Let's definitely not forget to pray and ask the Lord to heal our bodies. Ask the Lord to heal our souls and our, our, our wounded, you know, where we're struggling in our mental health. We're, we're struggling in our soul and our heart. He is there. He's our wonderful counselor. He wants to help us. He wants to um, counsel us and he wants to heal us oftentimes, but we have to ask. Sometimes we have not because we ask not. Malachi 4 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Amen. You know, I have a picture in my mind of a calf. One of my friends up in, in um, Canada, I'm not going to mention her name because I didn't ask if I could mention her name. Um, but one of my good girlfriends that lives up in Canada, she sent me a picture recently of her husband and he was holding this, this new calf that they, um, that they got from one of their cows. And this calf was so beautiful. And I think she said it was one of the smallest of their calves. Anyway, um, sorry, random, but it just made me think of that. And, uh, 1 Peter 2 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Amen. So we're being healed of our sin. We're being cleansed of our sin. Think of leprosy in the old Testament. Um, and also actually no, in the, yeah, in the old and in the new Testament, people were cleansed of their leprosy. So healing, forgiveness, cleansing of sin, 
they're all related together, right? And, and repentance is important. It's not just praying the right words. It's walking by faith and believing that God's grace is sufficient to help us to repent, which means to turn away from our sin. So when we feel convicted, it's important that we actually turn our eyes towards Christ. We, we believe on him to give us the grace to actually repent of our sin. Amen. And, and it's a, it's a, it's an ongoing work, right? Philippians 1, 6. Okay. I also included more verses on healing. Everything I uh, included, it's in the King James. I, I happen to love it. I know not everybody does. I happen to love the King James. That is my favorite version. So, um, you see through the word of God, the holy scriptures, and Jesus Christ, who is the word made flesh, each spiritual need has already been generously provided for all those who would repent and believe the gospel. Um, this little paragraph is me kind of smooshing together 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, Acts 2, 21, Romans 3, 23, 6, 23, and 10, 13. Um, Acts 3, 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I really pray that somebody who's watching this video, who's listening to the sound of my voice right now, would repent, believe on Christ Jesus for salvation, be converted. I pray that so much. Oh, I pray that so much. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is true. This is the truth about uh, the gospel. And we are living in the last days. The harvest is there. The fields are ripe for the harvest, but the workers are few, are few, excuse me. And as things progress along, I think that it's, it's important that we pray not only for those who are actively sharing the gospel on the mission fields and um, in churches, but I think that it's really important that we also take up this mantle of the Great Commission. The Great Commission, it, it, it is the Great Co-Mission, right? It's not the Great O-Mission, but unfortunately it's becoming the Great O-Mission. And we are supposed to be co-missioned with Christ, sharing his good news by the grace and the power of his Holy Spirit within us with everyone. So get yourself some gospel tracks, guys. Start praying and fasting and asking the Lord to have that heart of an evangelist given to you and that he would remove obstacles of fear of man and shyness and that he would embolden you and enliven you with true faith and love and compassion for your neighbor and for God that would spur you on to share the gospel with everyone that you can. So this is going to look different for each person, but believe me, every person who's saved by grace through faith and, and is in Christ, we're all part of this great commission. So I just want to encourage you and exhort you today to that end. So I wanted to share a little bit more um, from that sister in Christ again. I have several different messages, and I pray that everyone who is watching this, who will watch this video at whatever time you click on to this video, that it will be the right time for you to hear this word. All right, she said, sadly, our judicial system, like everything else, is imploding and has gone into captivity. Biblical deep darkness covering the earth before Jesus returns. Luciferian fallen angel technology, extinction level event, killing all biological life forms, including humans, animals, and plants, all humans dead by 2025. The beast financial system is fully operational, including all banking. Only those having the mark of the beast allowed to buy or sell. Pray and prepare now as God leads. Blood of Jesus on your doorsteps. The righteous judge is here. Judgment is redemptive. 
wrath is terminal. We live in the battlefield. So her prediction of 20, 2025, that's, that's uh, bread around the corner, you guys. Now, I'm, I don't know if this is, you know, going to come true. We have to test everything. And we do practice that on this channel. We, we practice the righteous judgment or testing of all spirits, testing of everything that we hear, every word of, of um, supposed prophecy, whether it comes from me, another sister or brother in Christ, I want to charge you. I want to challenge you. Test it according to the word and also test it according to does it come to pass, right? So we don't despise prophecy here. We test it. We test it. We, we look at it biblically. We're appreciative of true prophecy. And the only way that we can discern if it's true or not is through discerning of spirits and through testing according to the word. Take it back to the word of God. But also look at what's happening in the world. The, the world events that are, that are unfolding around us. Okay? So I wanted to share that with you. And then moving on, I actually also have an updated, clarified uh, list because the same sister in Christ, uh, her name is Madeline Camp, by the way. I don't think I mentioned her name um, in the last video where I shared from her last time. But um, yes, her name is Sister Madeline Camp. And uh, she very kindly um, corrected me. I did share my, my last video where I mentioned her. And she, she gave me some, some kind correction and clarification because I guess I was fumbling over some of the instructions and misunderstanding what I was reading. So I would be amiss, uh, or I would be remiss rather, to not share that with you. And she was so kind. She said, I, I thanked her again and I said, here's the video. And she said, it's my blessing. Wanted to clarify a couple of things on list. I too started with a brick rocket stove years ago. The Silver Fire rocket stove is stainless steel with a catalytic converter, lightweight, portable, and burns multiple sustainable fuel, fuel sources, including finger-sized twigs, dried banana fronds, dried cow patties. The Tent Camp stove is also stainless steel, portable, and can heat or cook. Solar Portable Lucy Lights, $14 at Walmart now light without need for fuel. Not sure if that price has changed. I know things in the stores, the prices in the stores are changing all the time, but that's what it was when she sent me this, which was um, several days ago. Okay, and then she said, sending you a list of permaculture perennial plants I have in garden. In garden. Blessings, kisses, and hugs. And um, I'm going to go ahead and share with you um, that scroll the right direction to get to the list with the seeds and everything so I really want to encourage you if you haven't already pause the video get yourself something refreshing to drink you know a cup of tea a cup of coffee some water um, I love sparkling water those fruit flavored sparkling waters mm, so good um, grab yourself a drink I'm gonna have myself a little sip of ice water get something to write with and um, please take this down because again this is coming from somebody who's been doing this for 40 plus years and teaching others to do it and that and by 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 this what I mean is okay sorry guys I um, had to remove some files from my phone it was just overloaded uh, running out of memory so my camera stopped so let's just pick up where we left off and this part of the video, um, the remaining part of this video is hopefully going to be nice and short for you. Thank you so much for everyone who's still with me, who's hung in here this long. I really pray that it's helping, it's blessing you. I really pray that this is encouraging you um, in the midst of everything that's happening right now. So hang in there with me. Here comes the list from Sister Madeline Camp. So um, she says, this is a list of my permaculture perennial garden plants. High nutrition, medicine and food, plant once, spread and come every year, seed safe to share, very few are annuals. All right, and here's the list. I'm gonna read it slowly-ish. Lavender, bee balm, aloe, 
oregano, rosemary, chocolate mint, orange mint, peppermint, catnip, lemon balm, pineapple sage, turmeric, ginger, chia, amaranth, moringa, kalanchoy, lamb's ear, comfrey, society garlic, purslane, nasturtiums, English ivy, Okinawa spinach, purple hyacinth, beans, scarlet runner beans, Malabar spinach, Jerusalem artichoke, kukuzi squash, Swiss chard, dinosaur kale, figs, mustard spinach, canis, strawberries, blackberries, sweet potatoes, spaghetti squash, butternut squash, acorn squash, potatoes, snake plant, aloe, beets, apples, blueberries, tomato, banana peppers, winter purslane. Virtually all of these plants are edible, high nutrition food and medicine. Please research each one. God's Goshen Garden, Holy Spirit led landscaping in food for past 40 plus years in multiple homes, towns, and states. And she put a little heart. So, wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I think there might have been one other little word in here as well. Yep, okay. All right, we're going to close it out with this one. This is going to be a little bit challenging, but I pray that we have ears to hear. I pray that we have ears to hear and that we won't take offense, but rather that we will take hold of what the Lord is saying and apply it by faith with humility and repentance if need be. She said, thank you, Lord. We not be like Lot's wife, her heart so tied to her life of the way things used to be that she couldn't accept a move of God that looked like it had some bad stuff on it. In her hesitation, she missed her visitation and became a monument to the past. I don't want to be a block of salt. Denial of where we are in time is not a virtue. It's a poison that will put you to sleep. As the Titanic goes down, the compromised structured church band plays on, snoozing. To acknowledge where we are in time is to have to act. Easier to just look away. But I pray that we won't be those who would look away. I pray that we here at Watch and Pray Always YouTube channel and um, so the people who watch the channel, that, that all of us in our lives, that we wouldn't be, you know, hiding our heads in the sand, but that we would, taking, we would be taking everything that we read and hear about um, and watch, that we would take it all to prayer, right? Take it all to prayer and then ask the Lord for for steps to take by faith that he would lead and direct you right all right so um, I do have uh, a little short garden tour that I wanted to share with you today um, it's about eight minutes long so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add that clip in as I did that separately um, but let me just say this now I hope that you all were edified and again, I know I'm repeating myself, but edified, encouraged and exhorted today. And if you felt that there was value in this video, then please consider subscribing. Please consider if you're not already subscribed, please consider liking and sharing it. Um, this is a very tiny channel and what I'm hoping is that eventually sooner than later I'm hoping to have the ability to do live streams and I can't do live streams unless I have a thousand subscribers um, evidently when it comes to YouTube um, or maybe it's that you can't live stream from a phone I'll have to double check on that because that's old information that's, that's old information. I, I'll have to double check on that. But I like to record with my phone. Um, as I've mentioned before, I have a, a, a noisy house, um, homeschooling family and everything. And we live in kind of a small home, um, a mobile home. So I like to record here in my car, although I know it's not aesthetic, 
aesthetically very pleasing. Um, it just gives me a, a little bit of quiet and, you know, a, a way to be able to think about the video that, um, that I'm making without constant interruption. So, um, that having been said, um, I'm going to sign off, uh, and I'm, well, I'm going to, I'm going to add in the other video clip so that you guys can see my little, um, garden tour. It's just the very beginning. Uh, again, I'm no expert with gardening. I am learning right now as, as I record, I am learning gardening. Um, I can't really teach. It's not a tutorial. It's just showing you what I have going. So that's about it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do all the things and, um, until next time, watch and pray always. All right. Peace. Grace and peace in Jesus. Hi there guys, welcome back to Watch and Pray Always YouTube channel. Today I wanted to start by showing you what I have going, or what I have growing rather, in my little container garden. So I wanted to show you this little structure first and explain to you how and why I have it set up this way. So as you can see, I have some sort of um, DIY container gardening going on here. Um, as these containers are actually office totes uh, which are a certain type of plastic which is food grade plastic um, and then you see the tote underneath the plants so that catches um, when I rain when I when when I rain when I water the plants that little tote underneath catches the compost tea basically the water that goes through and drains through the soil um, I reuse it so there's holes to drain in the bottom of the containers it drains down and then I reuse that that so um, we're getting more of those minerals um, instead of losing the minerals as it goes through the soil so that is the purpose for this kind of odd looking structure it is something that was upcycled uh, this shelving unit was given to me um, I don't know you probably can't see from here but there's little um, labels because I guess they used to use this in an office to stack sodas <laughs> so it says like Pepsi Mountain Dew Fanta uh, Sierra Mist um, but so I just took that and I um, you know through learning a little bit and stuff we came up with this idea um, what's nice about it is it's nice and tall so if you have back issues it brings your garden up high kind of like a raised bed um, also what we have going on in here is some mulch so we're, we're sort of using the back to Eden style gardening um, but in containers because we're doing container gardening here um, we have a small amount of space and we're slowly building out a uh, you know, sort of a vertical um, garden type thing for saving, for conserving space. But the Back to Eden Gardening Method documentary, that is something I think everyone should look at. It's really fascinating and it's also really inspiring and that's where I learned about using mulch. Um, now what is it? It looks kind of like straw or like pine needles, but actually what it is, is um, the droppings from this tree here. Uh, I believe this is a type of Palo Verde tree. We live in Arizona, so um, we have a lot of these type of trees. And so it just drops down these leaves or needles and I rake them up and I put them in my garden uh, containers. So um, maybe you already can recognize, but these are basil, rosemary, more basil, yet even more basil. And then back here, I have a little, um, a little purslane, some type of purslane that, that has beautiful bright pink flowers. Um, a cutting that I am propagating here and rooting. I also have a little bitty, uh, some sort of miniature cactus that's rooting in this same little container. Um, then um, here, I built this bed out of brick. I just stacked the bricks together. They were a little bit um, irregular in, in shape and size, so I ended up having to fill in a little gap here with a smaller brick, but that totally 
doesn't bother me it's fine um, this was really easy I built this myself and I did put in a baby gate as a trellis <laughs> I know that probably seems a little funny but it works I'm not actually sure if these plants are gonna need a trellis but I am growing cow peas, um, AKA black eyed peas in this container or in this raised flower bed thing that I've constructed here. And um, yeah, so I have some, some cow peas going in here and I, I put the trellis baby gate in place in case they need something to climb on. Um, so far it doesn't really seem like they do, but who knows. Um, I'm just learning as I as I grow here. I also do have some mammoth sunflowers um, seated in between, uh, so they're kind of fighting for the space. Which this one is a uh, that's one of the mammoth sunflowers. Um, I probably planted too much in here, but again, it's experimental, and we are still in the learning phases. And then over here. I did the same thing but different types of bricks these bricks are more uniform in size and shape so it, I, I like the way this one looks better to be perfectly honest but they're both exactly the same design um, so what we have going in here are various different flowers we have some um, different type of sunflowers the multi-head sunflowers we have some zinnias we have some cosmos I also planted some chamomile um, so far, I don't see any chamomile that has come up, at least that I'm aware of. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate, but that's what we have coming up in this part of the garden. Um, then over here, I have, um, sorry, I'm standing, my shadow is in the way. So I have some purslane here. Um, I found it so... Uh, funny for lack of a better word th that I found a hanging purslane basket at uh, the Home Depot for like 16 or 17 dollars but you guys you can actually find this stuff growing in the cracks in between sidewalks and you can take a cutting home and you can root it and everything I haven't been able to do a lot of foraging for wild edibles lately but Back when I was really focusing on that, I actually did that. I propagated um, quite a bit of purslane in my backyard um, in my old home before we moved here. So it is simply a common um, purslane plant. Um, they are considered a weed, but they're highly edible and medicinal, extremely nutritious. Um, this one has yellow blooms on it when it does bloom um, the other one I showed you has the pink so I'm not exactly sure the name of the other variety but this one is just a common purslane plant or a portulaca oleracea I think is what it's called um, then I have my lemon tree which has yet to produce fruit for me but uh, recently been feeding it and hopefully by next year we will be producing some lemons um, citrus in general does great here in Arizona um, as we have a lot of heat and sunshine and they do love that. And then I just have some aloes which um, were really looking terrible before. They were dry, they were turning all purple because they were getting too much sunlight and then I, I switched them. I, I repotted them and I switched them over to this location and they are just loving life now. They're fully plump and green and just looking amazing. In fact, this one is giving birth to a baby down here. So I'm really excited about that. Do you see the little, um, uh, the little baby plant that's coming in? These are the baby plant, the three leaves on the baby plant down here. So I'm really excited about that. So, um, let me turn this camera around if I can. I can't remember how to do that. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll just stop it right here and then I'll turn it around. Um.